you can order the Middle English Teacher's Notes for the Autumn Term, price £1.75, the Anthology's Storehouse 1, price £4.50, and Storehouse 2, price £3.50, and the Mr Magus is Waiting For You software, price £20.38, by contacting your local ITV company. Or send a cheque or postal order to Schools Office, Thames Television, 149 Tottenham Court Road, London, W1P, 9LL. I've come to do the reading. The reading? Yes. Yes, you've made a mistake, obviously. I uh, know. Yes, the man from the gas board did the reading on Monday, and then on Wednesday the electricity man came. No, I mean poetry reading. Oh, I see. Poetry has meters now, does it? Well, it does, as a matter of fact, yes. Yes, well, I'm sure I don't know where to find them. You'll have to ask the caretaker. Good day. Good day. Oh, well, what we had. Come for the job, have you? I'm the headmaster. Join the queue outside my office. I'll be with you as soon as I can. Uh, no, but thank you. What am I doing here with this lot? The day's delinquents. Fourteen-year-olds, twice my size, who smirk and grow spots before my very eyes. My palms are sweating now. Will I get the chance to explain to the headmaster who I am and what I'm doing here? I doubt it, at the speed at which he's stamping out villainy. Will I get detention? Perhaps they still use the cane here. Will I burst into tears after the third stroke and spend the rest of the day blubbering? When I first saw the headmaster, why didn't I say clearly... It is you, isn't it? Uh, uh, yes, I think. Jim Robinson, head of English. Oh, Mr Robinson, thank heaven. For a moment, I thought... I'd Follow to... me. Oh, sorry, yes. I sorry I'd... I couldn't meet you in the foyer. Oh, that's quite right. Nah, I got very carried away with Elliot. Oh, T.S.? No, Vanessa, bright girl, very enthusiastic. This way? Yeah, she's had a lot of trouble at home, her parents. Well, make yourself at home. Oh, thank you. Sit anywhere. Good. Except there. 
This is Johnston. Geography. Gus. The sixth form here are great fans of your work. Oh, good. Ah, that's better. I can see me now, in the library, surrounded by a score of young intellectuals, bright-eyed girls and shy young men, eager to explore the jewel-encrusted caverns of my soul. See? Oh, thank you. Yes, but of course they're much too busy at the moment. A-levels. So, instead, we've arranged a session with 3N. They hate school and everything about it, especially poetry. So we figured that 90 minutes with you should do the trick. Cheers. Three yeah. N. <laughs> I know what he'll do. He'll tell them about the scaffold. Scaffold? He must be a builder. Yeah. You know, they were nearly quite famous once. A long time ago. And then he'll recite a really old poem. The theme for today is violence, and homework will be set. I'm gonna teach you a lesson, one that you'll never forget. He picked on a boy who was shouting and throttled him then and there, then garroted the girl behind him. The one with grotty air. The head popped her head round the doorway to see why a din was being made, nodded understandingly, then tossed in a grenade. And when the ammo was well spent, with blood on every chair, silence shuffled forward with its hands up in the air. The teacher surveyed the carnage, the dying and the dead. He waggled a finger severely. Now let that be a lesson, he said. Tell him. Tell him, j just explain clearly what you'd like him to say. By the way... Yes? Uh, about the introduction. Oh, don't worry. I've got all that sorted out. I've written a few poems myself, you know. <laughs> all right, all right. Leave the, leave the ball there. Come on, settle down. Come on, settle down, please. Come on. Come on, hurry up. Right. Now then, what do you all think of poetry? Boring! I knew you were going to say that. You lot are so predictable. Poetry is not boring. It is. Well, it doesn't have to be. And our guest this morning has kindly come along to prove to us that poetry is anything but boring, that poetry can be fun. And so we don't want any loutish behaviour, do we, Whiteside? Right, good. Right, I'm off then. I'll be back at 12.45. I don't want any complaints about your behaviour from our guest. All right? So please... Give a very warm welcome to Mr. Michael Rosen. Tell him who you are. Tell him you're not Michael Rosen. Go on, tell him. I'll, uh, I'll lock the door just to be on the safe side. That geese is not Michael Rosen. Uh, no, uh, quite right. I'm not actually um, Michael Rosen. I'm, um, I'm I'm somebody else. Well, who are you then? No, as a matter of fact, my name is um, Roger McGough. Yeah. I suppose one or two who haven't heard of me, perhaps. Dead right. Dead right. Yeah. Okay. So what I did, I've uh, written a poem that tells you all about me. I think you'll agree it's a very accurate picture. It's called the writer of this poem. The writer of this poem is taller than a tree, as keen as a north wind, as handsome as can be. <laughs> oh, serious, come on, please, it's poetry, poetry. As keen as a north wind, as handsome as can be. As bold as a boxing glove, as sharp as a nib, as strong as scaffolding, as tricky as a fib. As smooth as a lolly ice, as quick as a lick, as clean as a chemist shop, as clever as a... The writer of this poem never ceases to amaze. He's one in a million billion, or so the poem says. There you are. That's what you can do when you're writing a poem. Exaggerate. Tell fibs. Perhaps later, you'll all write a poem, telling the world just how great you really are. You are great. You're all great. You're all special. Everybody's special. Sometimes people put you down, don't they? 
you know, you have these, all these great dreams and ambitions, and people always say, oh, you'll never do that. You're not good-looking enough. You're not tall enough. You're not clever enough. It's a pity. Here's a poem called The Man Who Steals Dreams. Santa Claus has a brother, a fact few people know. He does not have a friendly face nor a beard as white as snow. He does not climb down chimneys nor ride in an open sleigh. He is not kind and giving, but cruelly takes away. He is not fond of children or grown-ups who are kind. An emptiness, the only gift that he will leave behind. He is wraith, he is silent, his greyness of steam. And if you're sleeping well tonight, then hang on to your dream. He's sour, he's stooping, his cynic's cloak is black. And if he takes your dream away, you'll never get it back. Dreams with happy endings, with ambition and joy, are the ones that he seeks to capture and destroy. So if you don't believe in Santa, or in anything at all, the chances are his brother has already paid a call. And this one's about, there was a bombing in Belfast. The boy's name was Stephen. This is a poem about that. It's called The Identification. So you think it's Stephen? Then I best make sure be on the safe side, as it were. Ah, uh, there's been a mistake. The hair, you see, it's black, now Stephen's fur. What's that? The explosion. Of course, burnt black. Silly of me, I, I should have known. Then let's get on. The face. Is that a face, I ask, that mask of charred wood? Blistered, scarred, if that had been a child's face. The sweater, were intact, looks in fact all too familiar. But one must be sure. The scout belt. Yes, that's his. I recognise the studs he hammered in not a week ago. At the age when boys get closed conscious now, you know. It's almost certainly Stephen. But one must be sure. Remove all trace of doubt. Pull out every splinter of hope. Pockets. Empty the pockets. Handkerchief? <laughs> Could be any schoolboys. Dirty enough. Cigarettes? Uh, th this can't be Stephen. I don't allow him to smoke, you see. He wouldn't disobey me, not his father. That's his penknife. That's his, all right. And that's his key on the key ring Gran gave him just the other night. So this must be him. I think I know what happened. About, about the cigarettes. No doubt he's minded them for one of the older boys. Yes, that's it. That's him. That's our Stephen. Do you see what I was trying to say? Yeah. Good, because sometimes I think I'm better at communicating when I'm writing than in real life situations. Earlier today, for instance, the headmaster thought I'd come for the job as a caretaker because I didn't express myself properly. I was wandering around like a lost soul because I didn't assert myself. What does assert mean? Whiteside, tell him. Whiteside. 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 What is it? Uh, happy Monday, sir. Back to sleep, back to sleep. You see, writing gives us a chance to express ourselves without having to be in a rush. You can say what you like, and nobody is going to interrupt. Everything all right, Mr. Rosa? Whiteside, what do you think? Everything's of... fine, thank you, Mr. Robinson. Thank you very much. But are, are you sure? I mean, I'm White... sure. Whiteside's fine. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. <laughs> Do you like going into schools? Well, I like going into a classroom and, and reading my poems to kids. Although I think I must be a bit of a kid myself because sometimes headmasters can frighten me. And uh, as for some of the teachers I've met, in fact, I wrote a funny story about one once, about a school visit. Do you want to hear it? Yeah! yeah. Today, a real live poet will be visiting the school. You at the back, what did I just say? Again. 